ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hirul Dhatia. We have with us Mr. Vinkesh Kulati, Vice President at FADA joining in. Welcome to the show, Vinkesh, and always a pleasure uh, to speak to you and get insights from you. In fact, it's a day when uh, the auto sales numbers for the month of uh, June have all uh, Hiral, started Hiral, pouring Hiral. in. Hiral, the post is wrong. I've mentioned a lot of time. It is president, not vice president. That was two years back. Oh, I, I'm sorry. One I even second. sent the mail back. I don't know. Sure, I will get it corrected. I will get it corrected immediately. And, and we pronounce this FADA, not FADA. Okay. Yeah, so you can start again. I think. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hello and welcome to Nirma Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Mr. Vinkesh Kulati, President at FADA, joining in. Welcome to the show, Vinkesh, and a pleasure to speak to you always. Vinkesh, it's a day when you have the June auto sales numbers as well that have started pouring in. Overall, if you have to look at the year and the last, this quarter as a whole, what's the sense and what's the trend that you're picking up? Uh, so thanks for having me, Yeral, and it's always a pleasure being on this platform. Uh, uh, overall, see, if I talk about the auto industry, if I total industry is still not in a positive uh, phase, but as we dissect this, it with the different categories, there are a lot of mixed bags. So starting with the cars, which is passenger vehicle, that's really in green. It's going gung ho. A lot of waiting period. So uh, like Maruti is already saying, a two month waiting period, they have a booking. Uh, Mahindra coming up with one lakh sixty thousand figure. So if we see all put together, we have at least two and a half months uh, order book pending with across OEMs for them. So it's a good sign for passenger vehicle. The production has also improved. So. Uh, June figures, what we had could assimilate till now, we are seeing some 3,20,000 uh, production happening, which means, well, the production means the dispatches to the dealer, which means it's more than the average of uh, 2.8, 2.7, what they were doing last year. Mm. So that clearly gives us a hint that semiconductor issues are only uh, there where the demand and supply Demand is too much, so supply is not covering up. But what the normal production was, I feel semiconductor issues has been solved till the time. So a good sign on the car segment. But as we go towards uh, the two-wheeler segment, which is the major uh, volume giver in the Indian auto industry, and as you must agree that uh, India is the biggest market of two-wheeler in the uh, world, and uh, the kind of... Uh, uh, Indian uh, people are there, the rural control, the tier three, tier four towns, where the major purchases of two-wheeler happens and uh, the overall two-wheeler industry around 50% uh, or 55% plus is the entry segment. So all put together, it clearly shows that the pain point is still there in the entry level and the lower strata of uh, uh, Indian people. Why? because mm. we are seeing somewhat 15 to 25 percent degrowth depending on oem to oem on the retail side no doubt production they have improved uh mon and year on year also because last year june we had gone through the COVID times and uh, it wasn't full flow uh, but uh, if i talk of pre-covid levels we are still around 20 percent minus which is a major concern because most of the categories have overgrown the uh, pre-COVID level. So like commercial, we are uh, seeing a good green growth mm -hmm. and uh, passenger cars we are seeing, but uh, two-wheeler is a category which is still is under the uh, air and uh, problems are there. Right. So overall, Vinkesh, see, I mean, there were a couple of concerns that we were looking at as well. Firstly, it was high crude prices. Post that, you know, from a consumer perspective, if you go to see, you have seen a rise that has come in with regards to interest rates. Insurance prices have gone up as well. How big a deal is these factors causing this kind of a distress? Uh, if I talk about since three years, the two wheelers have started seeing these problems and mm. the trigger started with the BS4, BS6 conversion. Mm -hmm. So uh, the price rocketed. So the two-wheeler was the major uh, category where the, uh, no doubt, the commercial vehicle was also. But uh, two-wheeler took the big hit because uh, the price increased by around 30%. So a product which uh, an entry-level customer could have easily got at 40, 45,000 on road, 
today he has to shelve around uh, 60 65000 which is a big push for the entry level segment commuter segment where people uh, always uh, fill petrol only for the day so maybe 10 rupees 20 rupees today the job will be over we will mm. think about tomorrow so at that segment even this price increase is huge no doubt the finance is there, but still the margin money has to come in. So the I feel the distress started from the BS4, BS6 conversion. Mm -hmm. And uh, along with that, it came that five-year insurance thing came in where the insurance uh, rocketed, which was just pre the conversion. And since then, there have been a lot of issues coming up, petrol prices going up, uh, recently third-party insurance rate going up, and uh, the COVID not the first wave, but second wave really hit the rural people bad. The uh, people who are involved in agriculture or small time entrepreneurs who are working day in, day out to meet the ends. That is where the major stress we saw post the second wave of COVID. Whereas you, we should also consider that as of today, we have seen good three monsoons, last three monsoons. So crops are better. The MSP price is good. So it means their earning is better. But the kind of distress with uh, what uh, they have seen in, uh, should I pause? Mm, no, no, go ahead. So uh, what the kind of stress we have seen uh, uh, post-COVID last time, because a lot of fatalities happen and you must have heard the villagers and all rural belt also seeing the hospitalization going ahead and the COVID effect. Mm. So that has also created a, a sentiment, uh, a negative sentiment toward them for putting their savings into investments and consumer durables. So I feel they, have, they are still to come out of that. So when we talk of the urban people, they've already forgotten the issues of COVID. So they are now above it and uh, they are uh, going ahead with purchasing decisions, even travel, even holidays, everything. Mm -hmm. But once you talk to these people who are uh, getting salaries of around 30,000 and below, or the rural entrepreneurs or farmers, they are still under stress and they are not sure that they should uh, use their purchasing power to go ahead with, for buying assets. So even consumer durables or even uh, vehicles. So I feel all this put together has hurt the two-wheeler market a lot. Additionally, one thing what is also pushing this problem is not directly but indirectly is the EV push. So a lot of customers are confused. Should they buy an ICE vehicle today or not? Uh, because the message going around by a lot of startups and other EV players is that ICE is behind us now, which uh, uh, normally is not the right uh, way to promote because there are products, everything will be there. So going further, you will have different fuels working in different categories. But that is creating a lot of confusion in minds that is the EV only future for two-wheeler? So there are people who are waiting and watch. And, and on the other hand, EV is also facing two problems where we have seen mm. a lot of fires and other issues. Right. The other second side, when we talk of EV, we are seeing the issue of uh, availability also. Mm. So, so if, I, if I say there are so many dealers of ICE all across, there would be only 3% of the dealers today selling an EV product. So the confidence of customer uh, of buying an EV is also not there because he has been buying a two-wheeler for past 40, 60 years, generation to generation. And the confidence he had on the dealer local, he is not selling an EV. He is confused. Is the EV in or not? If it is in, why not my local dealer who has been in auto business for so long is selling an EV? So this is also pushing uh, the two-wheeler segment towards the negative growth for we are seeing. Right. So overall, you know, that we know that passenger vehicles is something which is seeing growth. However, when you talk about the CVs and the two-wheeler segment, uh, what's the anticipation by when do you see things moving out of the woods and we start getting back to the, that growth trajectory? A very difficult question for uh, two-wheeler. Uh, well, uh, frankly, uh, uh, with the current scenario, what we are looking at, at least two years is needed to at least come back to a normal mm -hmm. level, at least. Uh, no doubt there could be one change if this electric vehicle push comes in with all the legacy players. So like uh, Bajaj sold what, 2800 or Chetak last month. So 
hero is yet not in the electric. TVS has sold also very small numbers. So these four players, HMSI, Hero, Yamaha, mm. Yamaha, but Baja, TVS. If these four players comes up, come up with an electric vehicle and with good volume in production, mm. I feel that will trigger the numbers to go up. Mm. But that too, I don't see it happening in another year and two. So we need every player to be in the market with uh, a fuel uh, like ice engine and electric vehicle and the market to for the electric vehicle to mature enough so that customers doesn't have any fear in buying or the uh, faith mm. is not an issue uh, then only we can see the two wheelers see the growth trajectory happening so maybe in a month or two because the last year I haven't done good or all that I'm not talking but I'm, if I talk about a uh, actual growth year on year for, for the total year I feel another two years is a must and provided in two years the kind of capacity these EV players are talking and these four legacy players are thinking of launching EV. Uh, those are needed to at least come out of those woods in two years. Right. So overall, with all of this said and done, how big an impact is the Russia-Ukraine crisis as well, especially on the demand-supply mismatch? See, the Russia-Ukraine uh, supply issue normally came uh, to hit us in, what, April. Mm -hmm. Normally, that's a cycle. We take around 30 to 60 days cycle of supply chain of uh, process. And April, we did uh, expect, uh, so we were expecting semiconductor shortage to be behind us starting January because February, we did a good number and then March also. But April, it again dipped. But again, from May, uh, it stabilized and June has also done good. So I feel the Russia-Ukraine problem, no doubt, is uh, uh, affecting us. But it is affecting to the point where we are not able to meet the demand. But uh, it is not affecting to the level where we can say that we are able to produce the normal numbers what we were doing. Mm. So, so like if I talk about the car industry, car industry normally does 3 lakh uh, vehicles so max three lakh vehicles so it goes down an average so uh, it on an average we do 30 lakh in uh, for the past two three years it has been 28 to 30 lakh this time we are sure we'll be doing something 34 plus uh, even with this uh, russia ukraine conflict and all those things so a lot of companies have actually find out found out some alternate source to semiconductor from wherever they were getting so things are better now, but obviously not as good to meet the demand. So demand is still there. The waiting periods are still there. Uh, but things have improved a lot if I compare to the last two years when pandemic has hit us. Right. So, so with this, the next thing that comes into question is that we have to see how demand improves, right? However, you're seeing there's a trajectory that the RBI is going to go ahead and increase yeah. rates further. Inflation is a major concern as well, as the increase in wholesale prices will then get passed on to the end consumer as well. So overall, there's a possibility that we will see lower disposable income. Do you think that could be one of the other major factors which could act as a deterrent and hamper auto sales further from here on? Uh, you're right, uh, and actually these things do affect, uh, but... Uh... Uh, on one one category, when we talk of passenger vehicle, there are already a lot of waiting periods happening. And uh, for Indian uh, people, buying a vehicle is also very good, big decisions for a family. It is never an individual buy. So always, most of the time, it is a family buy. I'm not talking of the Gen X, which is buying today. They majorly go towards individual, but overall, it's a family decision. And mm -hmm. once they decided, everybody starts looking up to it when the car will come and it's become a very excited thing and a happy day when we take the delivery. So that that is that whatever the issues which are cropping today will no doubt affect us, but it will not affect the current today. It will affect the future time. So the inquiry levels are reducing the order book or you can say the bookings are going down that I agree. But overall, we still have such a big uh, backlog, which is continuing. So we are seeing there are customers who are not wanting to buy a vehicle because of these concerns. But there are uh, 10 customers behind him 
who are wanting to buy the vehicle if that customer cancels. So mm. the effect on retail will not be there at least for this year because there is a lot of backup. And I feel the kind of sentiment issues we are going through because of the inflation and uh, even the material price increase or all the other things uh, would affect more on the two-wheeler segment than the car segment. So car segment will be insulated at least for this financial year. And this had uh, spoken about it a lot now. This would be the best ever car sales till date. Mm. So the numbers will be high, very great. Uh, but going back, two-wheeler is a segment where these things actually affect it and, it and the effect is being seen on the ground today also. Right. So my last question coming to you, Vinkesh, is, is this the time to be cautious with regards to uh, the sales and how the sector performs? And, be, you know, I mean, when you look at the overall picture as a whole. Uh, again, category-wise, uh, leave hmm. apart two-wheeler. Two-wheeler is a case where you have to be very, very cautious and and I don't know what, what's going wrong because whatever could have gone wrong for a two-wheeler sale, it has already done. So uh, we are at the lowest, I feel, and uh, it will go up, no doubt. But when will we come back to normal? Like I said, it should be at mm. least two years. Uh, mm. And uh, But I feel the OEMs will have to come out and uh, be aggressive in the market because as of today, I don't see aggressiveness happening uh, through OEMs in any of the market. So cars, obviously, they don't have to because there is a waiting period. But two-wheelers, seeing the inventory at the dealership and the customer's interest not there, uh, we really need a lot of pressure from OEM on the two-wheeler side. So cautious, yes, in the two-wheeler segment. Uh, but even the commercial, uh, uh, it's, it's going great. And uh, over all hands should be there on aggressiveness in the commercial segment because one, uh, the government infrastructure spend is at, at a high time. The farmers, uh, you know, the MSP price or the crop uh, 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 return, what they are getting is at the best. And the crop production is also at the best. Overall economy is opened up well. Mm. And the kind of uh, industries growth, what we are seeing, no doubt inflation is there, but still a normal growth is there. So I'm expecting commercial vehicle will be uh, going positive. So no, no caution there. Cars, obviously, no caution there, but uh, it would be different for different OEMs. But uh, for the top five or six players, I feel they should be aggressive enough to expand in the coming two years because this could be the best ever time for them. I cannot predict future, but at least for a year or two, the car segment and the way the semi-compact uh, SUV has uh, taken by storm in India, uh, this segment will always be at least for two years growing like anything. Nobody can expect what will happen. And uh, uh, and uh, a good thing that we are seeing the average purchase price for Indian uh, automobile for cars have grown. Before it was around three to five lakhs, which is majorly controlled by Maruti. Now it has gone up to six to eight lakhs, which is coming through compact SUVs. So that's a good thing for dealers, for manufacturers, and even customers because they are getting a lot of good features. So normally what has lately happened that a customer wants uh, a, an extension of his drawing room in the car and he's able to get that. He's able to get all the kinds of features. He can change the LEDs internal of the cars. He can have a, a roof, a sunroof or a moonroof. The music system with 10 speakers, mm -hmm. 8 speakers mm -hmm. with a woofer. So it's basically becoming that he's he's uh, he is experiencing the same thing like he experiences in the home and is experiencing the car. Mm -hmm. So overall, the passenger vehicle also uh, is an aggressive and a positive side, so no, no caution there. So three-wheeler segment is doing good, but uh, caution for the players who are there on uh, the ice market or the diesel or the CNG, I don't see they doing uh, well uh, going further. But uh, if I talk on the electric vehicle, uh, no doubt, when I talk about electric vehicle three-wheeler, it also includes the the normal three-wheeler, which is uh, mm -hmm. a lakh, 20,000, 50,000, which is actually e-rickshaw. Uh, so if I talk about that, anything to do with electrical, uh, it's more of a capacity issue. The number they can sell, they, they should be more aggressive, and I feel that's where the growth is. Right. And my last question, Inkesh, coming to you is especially in terms of your ethanol blending goes. What's your view? Because 
uh, we've really achieved a lot. Do you think that's the scenario? Because from 2014, I think we were somewhere in that range of 2 to 4%. We've come up to 10%. And now, you know, we're talking of uh, reaching a 20% by 2025. Is that something which is achievable? Uh, you know, very frankly, the way uh, current government is going, whatever they think, it is achievable. Mm. No doubt the issue is that the manufacturers will have to change themselves. So, and, and it's nothing new. When the methanol or uh, what they call e-fuel or something, I don't exactly remember. When they, when they came up with an E10, they also informed what is E20 and when it will be there. Hmm. So, but nobody expected that to happen. Why? Because even the methanol required for E10 wasn't available in India. Because methanol was always a residue or a, or a vestige of uh, a process of sugarcane industry. Hmm. It was never the main production thing. So at right. that time, they thought that methanol production won't be as much to actually convert to E10. Hmm. Not lately, I don't know, uh, I've heard I'm not the right person to say, but I've heard there are a lot of uh, sugarcane industry who are now making methanol as their, not as a waste product, but as a main product. Main product, absolutely. Yeah. So there are, there are factories being set to produce uh, methanol, not uh, sugarcane or juice or whatever. So they are, they are, or sugar, they are made for methanol. So, and that is happening and that is where the current government uh, improved from 2%, 3% to they come up to 7% sometime. And now today they are talking of 10%. But I'm, I'm sure they can easily come up to 20%. But the bigger problem for the industry today is uh, there are most of the OEMs are working towards E2, E20, but I'm not sure who will be there first. I've heard uh, Maruti working on an engine which will work on it. So I feel they have done their R&D well and they'll launch as and end when required, that is their internal decision, but not a lot of others. The major problem will come about the vehicles which are already on the road. So uh, maybe the government will have to take the decision because the current engine, which was sold as BS0 or BS1, BS2, they cannot take an E20 uh, fuel uh, for their engine. So we will see more failure going in there. And, and the repair cost or the upgradation cost to E20 will be very high. I so I feel maybe once the process adapts and the date comes in, like we have a, a fuel like a normal fuel and a premium fuel, maybe the government works up with a system that a petrol pump will give E10 and E20 both. And uh, the older vehicles go for E10 and the newer vehicles will go for E20. Mm. I'm, I'm just contemplating, I don't know what happens uh, because new products, we can see the shift. E20 can happen and people are working on it. But old products, I have my doubt that it, uh, uh, I feel it will be a big, big problem for us workshops also and the customers mm -hmm. also to handle that. Right, so I think there are lots to focus on in the auto segment from here on as well. Lots and ups and downs that we will have to deal with. Uh, let's see how things improve. But thank you, Vinkesh, so much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to get a candid view from you as well as to what could be expected. Thank you. Stay safe and speak to you soon again. Thanks. Thanks, Cyril. Thanks a lot. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. And press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.